What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Lumion tutorial for you. So in today's video, I don't have a ton of time, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take another 3D warehouse model, bring it into Lumion and see what kind of effects we can create. So I'll kind of walk you through my workflow of getting it ready and we'll just see what we can do. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in this model from the 3D warehouse. It's the BFM Geneva model, and you can search for this in order to follow follow along um, inside of uh, SketchUp and Lumion. Um, this model is created by Lee Q Moss, and Lee, I apologize if I pronounced your name wrong, but uh, this is a great kind of baseline model that can act a little bit as almost like a canvas for us being able to do whatever we wanna do, because it's not 100% complete. And so go ahead and bring this into your model, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to take a look at it in SketchUp. And this is always the first thing you should think about doing when you bring in a model um, into SketchUp is you need to take a look and figure out like, or when you bring in a model from the 3D warehouse, you need to take a look and figure out like what's missing and uh, what we need in order to make this a complete model, right? So if we take a look at this building right now, you can see how it's basically created with some overlapping components in here. So you can see how there's a little bit of an overlapping component here, a little bit of an overlapping component here. And um, so what we're gonna do is we need to fill this back in. Well, the nice thing about this is this has been modeled with different components in here like this. So you can see how with these components in here, you already have the building blocks to kind of fill this in and get the look that we're going for. So to start off, I'm gonna double click inside this group and I'm basically gonna erase out everything in this middle portion right here. Um, Cause you can see how that's just a big gap. And then we're just gonna copy one of these components components over in order to fill this in. So once we've kind of filled this in, what that does is that gives us a little bit of a complete building. And so now you can come in here and you can see how when I'm erasing things on one side, they're getting erased on the other as well. And you need to be a little bit careful here. Um, you kind of need to be careful just of uh, knowing how this is created with different components. And so in this case, what this has done is this has really been created using some overlapping component groups in here. And so what we're gonna do is this one's a little bit tricky. I think what I want to do is I want to select all of these and I want to right click on them and make them unique. We'll see if that'll allow us to get rid of that. It sounds like no. Okay, I need to make this one unique is what I need to do. So what I did is I just came in here and I just made this component unique over here so that it wouldn't erase out the parts and pieces that are over there. You need to be a little bit careful when you do that, but for what we're trying to do right here, I think that's gonna work just fine. The other thing I need to do is you can tell how this truss right here has been modeled as a half truss, which is a smart um, thing to do inside of SketchUp because it'll make your model run or, um It means you don't have to uh, it means you don't have to come in here and model all this stuff twice. But the thing about that though, is you do need to come in here and you do need to come in here and make a copy of this piece on the other side so that this is all complete. So I'm just gonna do an edit copy and then I'm gonna go outside of everything and paste this in just cause the way these components are interacting is a little, it's a little strange. Um, I'm sure I'm sure that it makes a ton of sense if you're the one doing all of the modeling in here, but since I'm not, and I'm just pulling it down from the 3D warehouse really quickly, um, it's just a little bit easier for me to just take that and completely remove it from the component infrastructure, if that makes sense. And so once we've done that, what we wanna do now is we wanna kinda close off this back wall um, because we're gonna take this into Lumion and uh, we're gonna render a view looking this way. And so I'm just gonna kinda do the quick and dirty way of uh, just blocking it off with a face. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm outside of all of this stuff and then I'm just gonna block this off kind of like this for right now. Cause what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put our camera inside of this building. So we don't need to be super precise with this. Obviously if you're creating like a detailed model of this building, you might wanna do this a different way. But for, for what we're doing right here, as long as this doesn't create any weird shadows, this should be fine. We'll have to take a look at it inside of Lumion um, once we get it over there to make sure that this is all working the way that we want it to work. Um, and probably what I'm gonna do just for simplicity's sake is I'm gonna set up a view where this is hidden and I may have to set up a layer 
And I'm also gonna set up a view where everything is unhidden. So I'm gonna do an edit, unhide, all, and I'll update this as my second view. So this first view, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this in order to come in here and set up this model. Um, because you can see how it's got a really nice kind of base in here. And when I say base, what I mean is it's got a whole lot of stuff that we can kind of build off of. And uh, so we can come in here and we can start adding materials and everything like that. And so that's probably the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete out these face me components because they're not really gonna fit the rendering that I wanna create. The other thing about this is there's a whole bunch of little like, uh, little lights from a different rendering program. We don't necessarily need those. So those are pretty easy to find usually. You can just kind of go inside of a, your outliner and just do a shift click and select all of those and you can go ahead and delete those out as well. So that's kind of the first thing that you do when you're downloading a model from the 3D warehouse is you figure out what you need and what you don't need and you can either hide or remove those things that you don't need. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna export this to Lumion. So I'm just gonna click on the button for Start Live Sync. And I already had Lumion running in the background. If you don't, um, you just need to select a template and then bring this building in. But you can see how this is kind of linked. And I went ahead and I used the mountains template just because I like having something in the background. You don't have to do that, but that's the one that I used. And so if we take a look at this, we can go ahead and we can run a test render just to get an idea of how the lighting is gonna work really quick. So I'm just gonna go into photo mode and um, I'm gonna link you to a video down below about some presets for creating a uh, like a photorealistic rendering. And that's kind of where we're starting off with, just so I can kind of get an idea of what this is gonna look like. So I have a realistic shadows for YouTube. I've also saved a bunch of the styles from the other example models inside of Lumion as well. But what I'm doing is just trying to get a feel for this space and what the lighting's gonna do. So I'm just gonna do a quick test render. And so you can see how this looks pretty good, but what we need to do is we need to start adding some materials in here. So we're gonna go back into SketchUp and start adding some materials. And so if you remember, anytime we add a material inside of SketchUp, we can then come in and edit that um, in Lumion. So what I need to do is I need to start breaking up these different walls into different materials, depending on how I want this to look. So let's go back into SketchUp and just apply some quick materials. So I'm gonna start off and I'm just gonna apply some kind of a wood material to the floor. It doesn't really matter which one because we're gonna replace that a little bit later on. But we're gonna go um, inside of Lumion. So we just need to apply that material right here. And then I also wanna come in, and the nice thing about all of these being in here as components is if I change one, a lot of the others are gonna change as well. Um, I, I don't know how much logic has actually been applied to the way the components are in here, but like for example, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna apply like a brick material to some of these pieces. Maybe we'll also look at this lower piece right here and say that this has some kind of a brick wainscot. Um, I wish this was a little more detailed out, but um, I think it's gonna be okay for what we're trying to do here. So maybe we'll add like an antique brick wainscot material here. We'll leave these kind of white. And then I may go ahead and split this up. You can see how I'm just kind of cleaning up the geometry as I go. Um, but I may go ahead and apply a color. Usually I pick kind of a red color or something like that just to give me a visual indicator that these are gonna be a different material inside of, uh, inside of Lumion. And just the way these components are nested makes navigation a little bit weird, but we'll just kind of fly back in here and take a look at what we've got. So I'm gonna apply kind of a red material to this and we're gonna swap this out in Lumion so don't get too hung up on the way that it looks right now. Um, So I may do like a different plaster material up here or something like that. The other thing that we might wanna do is we might wanna take, and it's nice how these are grouped, we might wanna take these objects and apply maybe like a gray material and think about maybe making them like a, like a metal or something like that.
And so what you might notice is you might have to come in here and do this in multiple different instances of this component, just depending on how this whole thing is broken up. So just give it a quick look as you're going through and doing this, just to make sure that you're kind of picking up all the different materials. And you can see how I can just kind of fly in here and really quickly just take a look at all of these and make sure that I'm kind of picking this up so that the material has been applied to all of them. All right, so that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and save our model and then let's take it back into Lumion. So all we have to do in order to do that is just go ahead and click on the button for start live sync. And uh, so one thing you might wanna remember to do is just do an unhide all before you do that, um, just to make sure this back wall gets added back in here. And remember, we're never gonna actually face that wall with our camera. So we don't really need to apply a material to it. We're literally just using that to close off this space. So. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and update this scene and then I'm gonna click play in order to sync these changes inside of Lumion. And remember, if you want your performance to be a little bit faster to stop the camera synchronization because you don't necessarily want that. So now if I go into Lumion, you can see how this has those materials now applied. And so the nice thing about this is now I can replace those really quickly with Lumion materials. So you can see how all of this default material shows up as one thing, but then like this red and this antique brick show up as something else. So I can go ahead and inside the material editor, just click on this and edit those. So I'm gonna click on this brick antique and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find We'll probably use an outdoor material, but we're just gonna take a look at some of our brick options. And in this case, we want one, we could do kind of this uh, industrial brown brick or something like that. You can just kind of trial and error your way through this until you find a look that you like. There's probably some worn bricks in here and things like that that you can try as well, but just go through and find something that you like um, that you can apply in this situation. So, and then the same thing for this color A02, I'm probably gonna apply some kind of like a plaster material to it. Um, just some kind of, something that's got a little bit of roughness to it, maybe like a stucco material or something like that. So I'm just going through and replacing these materials with Lumion materials. So I'm gonna go do that for the rest of these materials and then we'll take a look and see uh, how we like what's been created. So one thing I wanna point out right now is this floor is very reflective and uh, we don't necessarily want it to reflect quite so much. So you can adjust that by double clicking on the material and going in and turning the gloss and the reflectivity down. So you want some gloss and some reflectiveness in here, but you don't necessarily want so much that um, it looks unrealistic. So for any of these wood materials, when you use them and when you apply them, you can make that change just by double clicking and going into those settings. All right, and so now we've got our materials applied. So let's go in and take a quick photo of this and see how it looks. So now that we've applied these different photos and done these different things in here, um, if we were to render another test photo, so, and we'll just call this something like test two, then you can see how we've got this really nice lighting in this nice space. And obviously there's some things that we still need to fix, but um, I kind of like where this is going. So let's kind of keep going with this look. So that's where I'm going to end part one of this tutorial. I think this is getting a little long, so I'm going to go ahead and split this up into different parts. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about adding furniture and other items, as well as setting up our settings for our final render. So as always, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought, if you found this video helpful. Um, and if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.